Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we saw that there can be multiple integrating factors. And so, in this particular case, with the equation y dx minus x dy, we found that some of the integrating factors could be 1 over y squared, x over y cubed, and of course, there's an infinite number in this particular case. So what we're going to show you here is what the solution will look like when we multiply the equation by an integrating factor. And not only that, let's say that we do it twice and we'll multiply it by a different integrating factor. We should get the same solution in each case. So let's go ahead and find that out. So we're going to multiply this equation by 1 over y squared. When we do, we get the following. 1 over y squared times y dx minus x dy is equal to zero because if we multiply the right side by the integrating factor we still get zero. So this becomes uh, 1 over y times dx minus x over y squared times dy is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and solve this equation. Now it turns out that this can be easily solved by separation of variables. So let's try that. So we move that over here so we get uh, dx over y is equal to x over y squared dy. Then moving the y over to one side, the x to the other side, we get dx divided by x is equal to dy divided by y. And then we can go ahead and integrate both sides. So we end up with the natural log of x is equal to the natural log of y plus some constant of integration. Let's call it c1. Then we uh, take the analog of both sides. So e raised to the natural log of x equals e to the natural log of y plus c1, which should be equal to e to the natural log of y plus e to the c1. Uh, and I shouldn't be, this shouldn't be plus, should be multiplied. And what we get then is we get x is equal to c2 times y, or we can say that in this case, y is equal to c times x. And so that would be the solution to this differential equation. Now, should we get the same solution when we use a different integrating factor? The answer, of course, is yes, and let's try that out. So here we're going to multiply times the integrating factor x divided by y cubed times the quantity y dx minus x dy is equal to zero. Again, we multiply the right side by x over y cubed, we should still get zero. So the left side now becomes x over y squared times dx minus x squared over y cubed times dy is equal to zero. Here I also think we can separate the variables. So let's go ahead and try that. So when we do that, we get x divided by y squared times dx is equal to x squared over y cubed times dy. Moving the y's to one side, the x's to the other side, you get x over x squared times dx equals y squared over y cubed times dy, which means that we have dx over x equals dy over y. We end up with the exact same differential equation over here. And so you can see we can integrate both sides. And of course, then eventually the solution always is going to be y equals c times x. Very same solution, no matter what integrating factor we use. So whenever the integrating factor is a legitimate integrating factor found legitimately with the right techniques, then you can see no matter which integrating factor you use, you should always end up with the same solution to the original differential equation. And that's how we now know that it doesn't matter which of the many integrating factors we use, it will always work as long as we don't make a small little mistake somewhere, which I often do. All right, here we go. That's how we do that.